Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight. 54 employees of one of the country's largest construction companies terminated. We've got the story. The opposition leader warns Shell North America over a proposed BPL deal. Plans revealed for an upgraded PMH. News is brought to you by Alive. Best. Welcome to Our News and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. All 54 employees of Cavalier Construction and Bobcat Bahamas Limited are without a job tonight. This after their positions were made redundant as directors appoint a liquidator to formally wind up the business. In a statement sent out late this afternoon, the company said the redundancy came as a result of significantly reduced workload the company has been experiencing over the years. Cavalier called it a sad time for all involved and that because of so many long-standing employees, Cavalier simply did not have the cash reserves needed to restructure operations due to the cost of the redundancy exercise. Doors went unanswered Monday afternoon at one of the country's largest and best-known construction companies. This as news spread that 54 Cavalier construction employees were let go. Labor Director John Pender says the company reached out to the department two weeks ago to advise that the employees would be made redundant due to lack of business. For the most part, they advised us. The 54 persons, they, they would have already identified those persons and they would have already advised those persons. And so if they didn't, they have to pay them in lieu of notice. The subordinate staff is normally received two weeks notice and the supervisors, those high up staff, would receive a month notice. If you didn't give them that, you have to give them that in salaries. According to Pinder, those positions made redundant included project managers, warehouse workers, yard workers, and office staff. A letter reportedly given to those employees said, It is with great sadness that we have to inform you that Bobcat Bahamas Limited is ceasing to trade with immediate effect. The directors are now taking the necessary steps with regard to the appointment of a liquidator to formally wind up the business. As such, your employment with Cavalier Construction Company Limited is hereby terminated immediately and you are dismissed because of redundancy. At the company's head office today, it appeared no one was in office, with none of the doors being answered. Oh, we're going here. It's not front door. Eventually, a man who only identified himself as an employee came out and said management had no comment on the matter. The labor director said his department has since attempted to reach out to Cavalier's human resources manager to see what can be done for employees, but to no avail. Not as yet, we, that's in the process of, we're in the process of doing that. An attempt was made on Friday, and that was not successful, so they, they're making another attempt as we speak to uh, speak with them again to see uh, they can't offer them any positions elsewhere. The move comes as construction in the country, in particular Nassau, appears to be booming with project after project in the works. Pinder said while the Labor Department will do what it can to assist the 54 terminated employees with finding jobs, he encouraged them to look at the possibilities on the family islands. This place for a short while and they're able to get what they're looking for. They are work in the family islands for them. It's not to work out there. And as a cavalier um, finds itself not being able to, I guess, win a bit for one of those jobs, their staffers can try to line up with these other construction companies that I know have subcontract work. Bahamas Power and Light's plan to sell stations A and D at the Clifton Pair Power Plant to Shell North America is being met with harsh criticism from the opposition and business community. PLP leader Philip Davis insisted it makes no economic sense. Berthony McDermott reports. Davis warned Shell North America about entering into an agreement with Bahamas Power and Light, adding that the deal makes no economic sense and the PLP does not support it. We can tell you right now that this smells of corruption. Someone plans to fleece the Bahamian public, fool the Bahamian public, and collect finders, administration, and transaction fees on this latest pronouncement. On the sidelines of the 29th annual Bahamas Business Outlook, BPL Chairman Donovan Moxie said the power company intends to sell station A and D at the Clifton Pair Power Station to Shell North America. Davis says Shell should be very careful before entering into the transaction with BPL and urged government to come clean on its exact plans for the company. Given the statements by the chairman of the company, it appears 
that without the leave of the Bahamian people through Parliament, the FNM has unilaterally decided that they are going to give the power generation portion of the company to a foreign entity. They never campaigned on this policy and were never given a public mandate to do so. There must be some public explanation for this. Davis, a former Minister of Public Works who would have had oversight of BPL, for the question if there is a real plan in place for BPL. The plans left in place were scrapped and purportedly replaced with nothing more than a memorandum of understanding with Shell North America to construct a 200 megawatts power generation station at their cost in exchange for a power purchasing agreement. In November 2018, BPL entered into a memorandum of understanding with Shell Gas and Power Development, which established Shell as the project developer for the power project. BPL has spent $95 million constructing Station A and plans to spend another $70 million to construct Station D. In November, Works Minister Desmond Bannister said government will use $70 million of proceeds from its rate reduction bond fund to build another 90 megawatt plant at Clifton. The public is now broadsided with the sale of power plants, leading Bahamians to ask, what is going on? The ever-changing positions of this government on BPL has deepened the mistrust, heightened the uncertainty, and worsened the loss of public confidence in BPL. BPL officials say negotiations for the deal are expected to be finalized in March. Reporting for Our News, I'm Brittany McDermott. Health officials have dismissed pathetic fabrications that scores of decaying bodies are being stored in a refrigerated trailer swarming with flies and abaco. Italia Clark spoke with the Minister of Health and filed the support. No lock on it, no lock, no security, and this is what we got right inside here. A bunch of rotten and bodies right here in this trailer. It was this Facebook video posted by Abaco local government official Kai Mills that prompted a response from Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands today. In a viral video that made the rounds on social media over the weekend, Mills claimed that the king of bodies of Hurricane Dorian victims were being kept in a trailer that was not properly secured. Those claims were similar to statements made by MP for Anglerson Glennis Hannah Martin, who also released a statement over the weekend claiming a lack of transparency and no sense of urgency on the ministry's behalf. However, Sands slammed both Mills and Hannah Martin, calling their comments untrue. Ronald Reagan said, trust but verify. Right. And so while I didn't believe the claims being made, in part because of who it was making the claims, we sent a team yesterday, the 19th of January. Now, even if the generator at the Marsh Harbor Clinic were to fail, and it hasn't, there's another generator on the cooler. And so we have not had any uh, worsening of the condition of these remains. Now bear in mind that all of the remains when they were bought in were decomposed when they came in. The Ministry of Health also issued a statement and described their claims as baseless and inaccurate assertions. According to health officials, the claim of a stench, fresh or old remnants of bodily fluids, at or around the trailer and suggestion that there are unusually large populations of flies attracted to the trailer are pathetic falsifications refuted by direct inspection of the trailer on January 17, 2020. San said since power was restored by BPL in November, it has been functioning at its best. When the municipal power goes off as it has, our generator comes on. Between municipal power and generator, other than a few seconds, over the last few months, we have had no significant uh, power outages. In other words, we haven't gone for two hours, three hours, four hours where BPL is not working and the generator is not working. The, gener the generator is working fine. BPL has been working at greater than 90 percent, some say 95 percent, uh, since being restored in November. When asked how much longer the process of identifying the bodies would take, San said this. We are seeking to optimize the identification process. That means that we need to have persons come in and say, I believe that this could be my mother, my brother, my auntie, and so on and so forth. 
once that is done, then the process of, of determining that there is no longer a need uh, to get additional tissue samples and so on and so forth, we would then plan on a dignified, respectful burial. San says there's a truth in every story and advises the public to stay away from rumors circulating on social media. Reporting for our news, I'm Italia Clark. All right, thanks, Italia. Well, the mother of a man who was murdered in a Haitian village last week has been overcome with grief following his death. She spoke with Jared Higgs one week after her 33-year-old son was gunned down during a drive-by shooting on Montgomery Avenue. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! 59-year-old Anita Francois was often overcome by emotion when she spoke to our news about the death of her son, 33-year-old Jacqueline Francois. Francois was gunned down in a drive-by shooting on Montgomery Avenue last Monday night, less than a mile from his home in a neighboring shanty town. His mother says during their last conversation, she begged him to stay put. My son called me. Mommy, I come in red now. I said, Jacqueline, please, I don't want you to go down there. He said, Mommy, I come in red now. I can stay long. When they called me, I, I see my son on the ground. Francois' family say he spent many a days in this shanty town just off of Cowpen Road. They say he had three children and he worked very hard to provide for them. He working hard to take care of his child good. Sometimes when I look, Jacqueline come from a car wash, come in with case, noodles, juice, everything. Officers are on the hunt for a black Toyota Paso that they believe was the getaway car. Meanwhile, family members are only left with memories. That's my nice son. Man, I have fever. He said, Mommy, I come in right now. Then I look, my medicine come. Jacqueline was a nice person. Jacqueline was a loving person. Jacqueline was never disrespectful. Jacqueline was a hard-working man. Everything I, I need, if you get it, you give, you give, me, you give me that. Every, every, everything my wife, my, my wife needs, you, you give him that. The grieving mother, who has several sons, says her dead son can't be replaced. I get plenty son. Jacqueline care about me. My baby care about me. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jared Hayes. Defense Force officers apprehended 31 Haitian migrants in the Ragged Island chain this morning. Acting on information of illegal Haitian migrants on an uninhabited key north of Ragged Island, officers searched the key and discovered 31 Haitian migrants said to be in fair health. Officers are conducting another search of the key and surrounding areas with the help of, of the Ragged Island fishing community. Still to come, new hospital plans revealed, plus big changes ahead for Bahamas Carnival. Stay tuned. From TV to phone to fast internet, how can we show appreciation for the 25 years you've been with Rev? To celebrate our 25th birthday, Rev is rewarding 250 lucky customers with $250,000 cash back. Simply switch the trio, upgrade the trio, or pay your bill in full and have your chance to win cash this Christmas. Just call 601-8992 or email us at trio at CableBahamas.com. Rev, you and us together. You're watching our news. Welcome back. New details are emerging about the government's proposed redevelopment plans for Princess Margaret Hospital. Last week, the Minnesota administration made a pitch to the United Nations Development Program, which is managing donor pledges for an upgraded PMH in the wake of Hurricane Dorian. Jasmine Brown has the breakdown. The Public Hospitals Authority Master Plan and Facility Operations Assessment Report gave a detailed breakdown of those proposed plans, which officials say are desperately needed to improve the aging facility. The plans indicate that those buildings will be replaced in phase two of the project with a helipad, as well as women's and children's units, accident and emergency, and imaging. 
According to the document, Phase 3 would include the demolition of existing clinics and storage. That section would be replaced by Phase 4 that would include a medical surgical tower, medical school, food services and surgical services expansion. Phase 5 would include a parking garage and clinical housing complex. The report only gave an estimated total cost for Phase 2, which had a $148.3 million price tag. That figure is just a fraction of the price outlined in a Ministry of Health project summary prepared for the United Nations Development Program. The Ministry of Health report called for millions to be spent on facilities in Abaco and Grand Bahama and a 300 to $500 million investment in the redevelopment of PMH, citing it is the central hub for public sector referrals from all islands, inclusive of Grand Bahama and Abaco. Ministry of Disaster Preparedness Management and Reconstruction Permanent Secretary Carl Smith says they are simply ballpark figures. He sought to downplay the half a billion dollar price tag. Those are estimated figures right. because for example in the health sector when we talk about uh, building a clinic we have a guesstimated figure we would then have to meet with prospective developers persons who express interest and then we have to design perhaps and cost out what that facility will look like. Smith says the figure is just an estimate coming out of what he termed a concept document. In the case of the health sector the rebuilding of the building of a hospital, a new hospital in Grand Bahama, uh, upgrading the facilities and expanding the facilities and perhaps building a new hospital here in New Providence because it is the hub of our health care facilities. Last week it was revealed the UNDP would be managing donor pledges made at a conference last week Monday. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. The 2020 carnival season has officially begun, and Palantra Media is promising the ultimate mass in paradise from May 1st to May 3rd. Bahamas Carnival 2020 is making a lot of changes, which Palantra Media rep Kenny Mackey says will bring a new feel and great vibes to the cultural festival. One of those changes involves moving events from Clifford Park to Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium. And then we take it into a festival feel. So we'll be here from 5 o'clock if you want to bring your kids food, festival, that kind of feel here. So taking it just out of the... Um, carnival range to a cultural range. So for us, it's about just trying to make sure we get bigger and more exposure and not really taking anything away. Bahamas Carnival 2020 will also see the return of the music competition where artists will create their own carnival jam and perform on the big stage at the stadium. And with changes to the carnival route, to be released at a later date, Bellbillers will have a stage to cross at the national stadium where judging will happen. There is a significant increase in bonds reporting visitor arrivals. Like Mr. Markey says, this year is going to be a good one. Um, there are a lot of international guests reaching out to, to different bands, finding out details about carnival, interests in costumes, and of course, when costumes will be released. Still to come, the business community calls for more clarity on BPL's rate reduction bond. Stay tuned. From TV to phone to fast internet, how can we show appreciation for the 25 years you've been with Rev? To celebrate our 25th birthday, Rev is rewarding 250 lucky customers with $250,000 cash back. Simply switch to Trio, upgrade to Trio, or pay your bill in full and have your chance to win cash this Christmas. Just call 601-8992 or email us at trio at CableBahamas.com. Rev, you and us together. You're watching our news. Welcome back. Former Chamber of Commerce head Edison Sumner is calling on the government to provide more clarity on the BPL rate reduction bond ahead of a 15% increase in electricity bills in March. Georgia Bain reports. Former Chamber of Commerce President Edison Sumner says the high cost of electricity has always been a major contention for those in the business community. And with bills expected to increase by 15% in March, this could drastically affect the bottom line of small to medium-sized businesses. Any additional cost is going to be a concern to them, um, especially when we're already operating in a lot of cases in what is, is a very challenging economy. Um, they're not 
raising any additional revenue or capital to support their businesses, but the cost of doing business is increasing, it seems, very, um, very rapidly. According to Sumner, the government must find a way to offset the escalating costs of running a business and make it more palatable for business owners. He added that with the cost of electricity set to increase and businesses still adjusting to the increase in value-added tax, business owners are finding it difficult to generate decent revenue, pay employees, and grow. If that increase is going to guarantee that there is going to be better sustainability of electricity, uh, that there's going to be better um, security of electricity, and that the, 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 corp, the company who's providing these services is going to be more efficiently run um, as a result of it, then I think it may be a, a bitter pill to swallow, but it's something that we think that may be necessary. Sumner said more clarity is needed by the business community on the rate reduction bond and how long BPL customers will have to pay the 15 percent increase. I think that there may be some further clarity needed from the company to the business community and to residents who are customers of that uh, corporation now to explain exactly how this is going to work. Take away the confusion, right? Um, I think the, the, the best thing to do is to keep things in as simple uh, terms as possible so that everyone understands what it is that we're paying for. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgie O'Bain.